My next guest is Ja Lei. She is a multimedia artist and you may have seen her beautiful abstract work on IG where her process videos have been viewed by millions of people. With her newfound social fame, she has achieved her goal of becoming a full-time artist and get this, she started her painting journey just two years ago. Welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, being a guest. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. You know, so let's like take it back. I'd love to hear about your kind of art background, your art journey to where you are today. Sure, sure. So I actually studied, um, I studied radio, TV and film in college. That's what the major was called back then. And I um, really focused on videography. So that's really what my passion was, making videos. And this is like right when YouTube started. Um, and so I, in college, I hosted a TV show and I had to take a radio course. And so I learned a lot about the production side and not really the art side. Mm -hmm. um, but I continued to focus on videography and eventually led to photography. And then I had a friend, a mentor of mine, who was starting to curate art shows. And she was like, hey, you should be in my art show. And I was like, you know, I make video. And she was like, no, take some photos. And so I started taking photos because I had a DSLR. And from there, I just started taking photos. And then I have been um, submitting my photos to art exhibitions for the past over 10 years now. Um, and so I have been a part of art shows through photography for that long, but it really wasn't until 2020 that I started um, doing abstract paintings. So, yeah. So crazy. That is two years yeah. ago. So like, how did you discover this, your, your scraping technique that I, you know, that yeah. a lot of us can see? I, I want to also like share. Okay. Um, yeah. I I discovered it actually because I met a fellow artist at a show that my photography was a part of. It was down in Portland, Oregon. And um, another another fellow artist, the, the show was about the immigrant experience and people who have an immigrant background. My father is from Iran and so I'm first generation American. And so um, I was connecting with other artists while they were there. And this other artist, he had this beautiful painting and it looked like watercolor paints. And I was asking him, what medium do you use? And he said, it's fluid acrylic paint. And I was like, wow, fluid acrylic paint. I've never heard of that. Let me go get some. <laughs> so a year later, I was doing watercolor again because it was really um, a way for me to just, just wind down in the stress relief. And um, I decided to buy some fluid acrylic paint. I went to an art shop and I bought some and I tried to use it as watercolor paint and it was not working out. I could not get my, my painting to look like his. And so I was like, what else can I do with this paint? It was $26. I need to use it for something. Yeah. Back then it was like a lot of money for art supplies for me. Yeah, that is, yeah. And so I was just on YouTube and I saw a woman um, using, she was just scraping the paint with a piece of paper. She was um, making, she wasn't making the style that I do. She was literally just like moving the paint across um, a canvas with a piece of like cardstock paper, like a big piece. And mm. I was like, wow, that's all you need. And so I started doing that. And again, eventually, as you showed in that last video, I realized that it was my husband actually that was like, hey, that looks like people. And so then I started intentionally making each piece look like a people, look like community, look like a family. So it really was kind of like a happy mistake where you're like experimenting and then you're like, wait a minute, I, I think I stumbled on something mm -hmm. pretty powerful. Exactly. Pretty awesome. So exactly. when, when, do, when do you think, was that first piece that I showed, what, I think in the cast That wasn't the very first piece. Um, the first piece, again, wasn't like people, but um, that was one of the first ones. And again, I said I was a videographer. And so a part of the fun of the whole experience for me is documenting my journey. So I always had my camera with me. I was always recording. Um, even if it, you know, it didn't make it to Instagram or YouTube or wherever, I was still recording constantly. Oh, that's so interesting. Because I'm, you know, thinking you're creating content specifically for IG, you know, but you are creating. Yeah. I mean, you're just documenting your process. Exactly. I have so much content that I don't share. I would say that, 
you know, maybe 10% is what you see of my actual work because I'm just like constantly filming every time I create. And not everybody wants to see all of that, right? (laughs) Girl, I hear a documentary on your hands. That's what I hear. I'm like, Maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah. And then you have an exhibit and you have a showing. This is great. I'm already like, I'm here for your documentary. Whenever it comes 2023. Oh, that's actually next year. Oh my God. 2024. 2024. Yeah. Um, and so are you a full-time artist now or are you having other um, side projects? Um, I started out not as a full-time artist. I was working Full time um, in 2020, when I started painting, I was working as a development director at a nonprofit organization. And so I was working full time, but of course, I was working remotely. I was working at home. And really, I started doing this because of my daughter, because I had, she was three at the time, and she does not have a lot of a, um, a you know, she can't pay attention a long time to certain tasks. And so she always loves to do everything that I do. So we were doing watercolor paints together. But when I bought the fluid acrylics, she wanted to be, um, I wanted to test them out, but um, you know, I needed her to focus on watercolor. So she still does watercolor and I was doing fluid acrylics, mm. but she would be done with her watercolor paint in five minutes. So I had to figure out how I could finish a painting in five minutes. And so that's how I started doing the dots. And so I started doing the dots because it was fast and it allowed me to create a really beautiful, vibrant piece really quickly. Um, and so, yeah, it just worked out really great. And then I started um, selling my original paintings. And then I have a friend who was like, you should start an Etsy shop. And so I started, I started an Etsy shop. And from there, I was able to make enough income where I was able to quit my full-time job Incredible. and focus on my art. So congratulations. I, that's a huge thing to be a full-time artist and have your art, you know, basically is your livelihood. So congrats. Um, and that's incredible that it's, I mean, these are all just like little, ha- like, like happy accents. You're like, I need to do this. I need to, I need to do it faster. Mm-hmm. And it's turning into this incredible like creation. So I'm curious about your creative process. You know, now mm-hmm. are you practicing or doing a lot of experimentations before you have a final piece or is it always like, let's see what happens. I'm going to put some dots on the page and, and see what um, happens. Recently, I've been experimenting a lot more. Um, I, as you, you, you said you, you mentioned you saw my live last night. I was painting over something that I had already painted twice. And so I'm finding myself being challenged to grow as an artist and also to create bigger pieces. I started doing, you know, eight by 10, five by five inch canvases, something really small. Mm-hmm. It was really easy to create. Um, But now I'm doing much larger pieces, you know, 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. And so they're very large. How can I scale up my work to have the same impact visually? Um, So I'm definitely experimenting. I'm definitely trying to figure out what works for me. This is no longer a five minute painting process (laughs) for me, much to my daughter's dismay. She's like, why are you in the art studio for so long? I'm like, girl, can you please go bother your father? Yeah. um, So now it's like, days and days that it takes me to prep the background and then do the painting, plan out what colors I'm going to use, make sure I have all of the colors. I no longer live in a big city. I can't, you know, just pop over to an art store. I have to go 30 minutes or 40 minutes by train to get to a art store that has the paint supplies that I need. Um, and then I have to plan that out and then, you know, prep the canvas. It doesn't work out. If I run out of paint, I did it twice already. I run out of paint. I need to go to the store again and get a new canvas get a new paint supply. So it's a lot bigger process now for me, but it's also much more rewarding. So I get to challenge myself as an artist. Yeah. So when you, so when you get a commission, are people being like, I want these colors or I, or I want it to convey this, or is it mm-hmm. I love to, whatever you create? I just want it this size. <laughs> Some people just tell me the canvas size and they're like, do what you do, which is great. Yeah. But then some people tell me, you know, like they'll, a lot of people send me a picture of their room, wherever they're going to hang the painting, mm. which is really helpful. Cause then, then they're like, look, I have this, this is my dining room. I'm going to hang the painting here in this space. Can you match the color scheme? I'm like, I got you. I can do it. I, yeah. I did a project for this woman in Hong Kong and it was so cool. I was like, wow. Okay. I will make a painting for you. Um, but my recent commission, she's like, I wanted to represent my three daughters. And so I am really trying to, 
give her a piece that she could be proud of. And then she could also pass on to her daughters, you know, so it, it can be hard, but honestly, I love my, um, my collectors because they really give me creative freedom to, you know, do what I do. So. Yeah. I, so the, the three daughters commission that was the IG live that I tuned into yesterday. Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel mm-hmm. like that, that probably is two of a, such an interesting like pressure where you're like, it is abstract art, but you want it to be so meaningful for someone's family right? to handle those emotions as an artist, you know? Yeah. I mean, I want to give them something, but I also, I also think about, um, for me, my art, again, it represents family, but also represents our ancestors. So somebody saw the painting, um, the second attempt that I had before I painted over it. And they said, I see more than three people. And I, I'm thinking like, of course you do, because you see future generations there. You see past generations there. You know, you see the women who came before them standing with them. So I think you're always going to see uh, something something different uh, when you look at a piece, because, again, it's still abstract. To me, I still call it abstract. So you're always going to see something. I think that people see what they need to see um, mm-hmm. in each piece. So I don't feel that pressure necessarily just to show two, three people or four people. But um, again, I think people see what they need to see and what and what really their heart needs to see. So, I mean, that's so beautiful. I, I think that's, you know, a testament to how beautiful your abstract art is, because I think abstract art can be so intimidating to some people and like just art in itself that there's like pressure to be like, do I feel something? And I, mm-hmm. your pieces are immediately convey like togetherness always you know and I I just find that so beautiful with your work I'm like wow I'm curious like it you know as I I look at your work on IG and and through your Mm -hmm. website you just seem so inspired and constantly creating and I'm curious have you ever experienced a creative rut in the past two years or just like a creative Mm -hmm. block and if you have like how how did you get out of it Mm mm-hmm Um, well, definitely I create, I experienced a creative rut. Uh, there was a point, I want to say it was springtime where I told my husband, I was like, I'm done. You can, um, turn the art studio into a, um, a greenhouse or something. (laughs) Like last spring? This, like a couple months ago. Yes. Oh my God. 2022. I was like, I'm done, baby. Like, I'm not going to refill my paint bottles. You can go ahead and get some more plants and, you know, take out the tables and put a bench in. I was done. I was like, I don't know what it was. I was just going through something where I felt like I I also get a lot of negative comments and I don't, I try not to let those negative comments get to me, but they get to you, right? Like, yeah, I've only been on like TikTok and Instagram for two years, but people are very vicious. They're very rude. And I was getting a lot of comments that people were saying like, a toddler could do this or... Um, like we see, we keep, people kept saying, we keep seeing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Can't you do something else? And so I was like, you know what? You all didn't say that to Salvador Dali when he was making those clocks melt in the desert. <laughs> you didn't say this to Frida when she was making her portraits of herself over, you know, so I was just, I'm not, not trying to compare myself to that, but there are so many artists that continue to create very similar pieces and that's okay because and I tell people that's what's on my spirit. I need to create that. That's what that's what I'm called to create. But it was getting to me at that point. And so and also my daughter was out of school. I guess it had to be closer to June. Um, and so I didn't have a lot of time to create anyway. Mm. So I was done. I was like, I'm done. But I just gave it time and I was still active on Instagram and social media. Probably people didn't even notice because, again, I filmed so much of my content that I still am able to post. Like I could literally not create anything for another two years and could post like almost, I could post twice a week. (laughs) So I just, I just sat with that feeling of not inadequacy, but like wanting to pause and think like, is this what I want to continue to do? Do I want to branch out? I'm not a classically trained artist. I am self-taught, you know, I am a, a trained photographer, videographer. I'm not a trained necessarily painting artist. Do I want to try something new? But after I sat with it a while, I was like, no, I have a message that I want to share. I have something meaningful to share with the the larger communities. I'm going to keep creating. Um, So I just had to remind myself that, you know, my art is worthy of, you know, my time, really, because I'm not here to please anybody else. I'm here to please myself. So a lot of people are like, you know, 
I don't like it. Or when the person told me that a toddler could do this or a grandmother could do this. You know, a grandmother is a person who is honored in my community, right? It's like someone who's respected. If I can do what my grandmother can do, wow. The years she spent learning how to do that, that is a wonderful compliment to me. So, yeah, it was a lot. Uh, there's so much. I hope that I'm like, there's so much I want to say. Like, one, I'm so happy you're you're in a place of like back and back creating out of joy and being like, no, I have something to say. This is for me. Mm -hmm. Also, I love to always think it's like, shout out to the haters. You know what I mean? It's just a dark, it's just a dark love when you really think about it, you know, let mm -hmm. them say what they want to say, but it is, mm -hmm. it's just the other, it's just, it's a, just a hate, a hate love. You know what I mean? Cause no one who's hating on you, like doesn't love you yeah. type of yeah. thing. And when people look at art, they go to museums, they see things and they go, oh, a, a kid could do that. I could do mm -hmm. that. First of all, mm -hmm. you can't, you couldn't, right. I could, a kid couldn't do that one because it's an idea. And that's mm -hmm. like what a lot of this like art you see, it's like, you need that idea. You need the technique. You need to put it out there. Nobody can just do that. You know right. what I mean? And I hate when I hear those comments from even if I go to a museum and I'm with someone, they're like, oh, I can do that. I'm like, no, you can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Like maybe that looks like a squiggle, a line to you, but like mm -hmm. there's tension behind it. There's an idea behind it. There mm -hmm. is so much more than what you see. So it's mm -hmm. just, well, let's say, you know, we got to ignore the hater or just, just be like, shout out, shout out to the haters. You know what I mean? You keep, you right. keep coming. Keep commenting, keep commenting, getting more views for me. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Engagement, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, your work is so beautiful and powerful. And so I just, uh, I'm so sorry that got to you, but of course it does yeah. because we're human. And that's like another yeah. reminder too, of like, be fucking nice. Like yeah, you're exactly. at someone's art, like, right. Just, I don't have to share this. <laughs> I could oh, leave it in my archive. Scroll past. It's like, just keep scrolling. Right. You don't have anything nice to say. Don't say anything. Exactly. So common sense. Well, you know, let's talk about your favorite piece of art. And okay. I'm going to pull it up. Okay. Because I'd love for you to, to talk about it. What's, what is the name yeah. and, and just the story? So this piece, um, I just call it baptism. This is one of my very early pieces. Like I would say this is in the first month that I started creating um, so I've talked about this before on my channels, but my mother was a pastor growing up. And mm -hmm. so she had a huge impact on my life. She passed away when I was nine. But before that, you know, she, of course, like her and this okay. people that stepped in after she passed away had been huge figures for me growing up. Um, and so my mother, she we would go to church, of course, every week. Uh, on Sundays, but also multiple times throughout the week. And I remember baptisms in our church, they were a big deal. Everybody would come up to the altar and everybody would stand around and everybody would, you know, be like a circle, like a hug around the, the family that was baptizing their child or their, you know, whoever their family member was that was getting baptized. So it was very much a circle that we enveloped them in our love, you know, in our blessings. And so, as I mentioned, I didn't have intention necessarily of creating people. And I was literally just placing dots on a canvas, but I created this piece and it touched me so much. And I, I didn't sell it. I still have it. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the few pieces that I haven't sold, but um, I just love it because it looks like somebody they're holding hands. You know, they're reaching across the aisle and they're holding hands. People you can't really tell. Um, there's people standing at different angles and it just reminded me of that sense of um, love when a baptism was happening and we were all standing around the altar and we were all there for one purpose and we all had, you know, good feelings towards um, really wanting to bless the life of this individual. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this piece represents. I love it so much. And it just really, the, these reminders I feel of my life have come out in my paintings because I don't necessarily talk about, uh, these things that have happened in my life, but they came out of my art. And so it's kind of forced me to tell my story because of my art. <laughs> I love that. That's so beautiful. I mean, the, when you said baptism, I was like, oh my God, I actually see it. Like, you know, now I'm like, for me, 
so many feelings is just hearing that word. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. I do see a community. I do. Mm-hmm. I don't know that like blue spot to me. You just like think of maybe that's where the baby, the the water, and well, the water is. exactly, the water and and the right and the purple like representing like royalty even and yeah. So yeah, yeah. and at first I didn't see the the little connection mm-hmm. in that like you know negative space or maybe mm-hmm. it's me or is yeah that, is that the canvas yeah. or is that. No, no, th- those are that's paint. That that's uh, tan paint. Mm-hmm. And then there's like um, above the black lines. There's two people. I, I see two people there. Two little people because again, our community was always our church community was always multi generational. You know, so you have older people and younger people. Everybody was included in the experience. So, I love it. This piece is so beautiful. Thank you. Two year olds cannot do that. First of all, <laughs> like no one can do like. That's a whole story. Those are, I mean, that's so beautiful. Yeah. (laughs) You're incredible. So I hope you feel that your work is incredible. Thank you. (laughs) That you create powerful work. Thank you. That is just so touching too. You know what I mean? That's so nice. Um, Do you have uh, preferred like paint products or anything that you use in your studio or is it Um, best? So I, so this is this is a part of it of my journey is transitioning from using paper to scrape to a squeegee. And so the squeegee really revolutionized things for me. Oh, legit um, squeegee. Like a squeegee, like in the first video you show, that is my that is my tool of choice. I left it in the States, that brand. There's a special brand that I like. But um it definitely became a trend after I started posting my videos of doing my art. That squeegee is from Dollar Tree, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> Wait, I want to uh, go back to it. So um, there's another scrape artist. Her name is Cherie Studios, and she's really big on TikTok. So she actually has more followers than me. But once she started using the squeegee, the same squeegee from Dollar Tree, because we're friends on TikTok, her videos blew up. Wow. So that's a whole nother thing of like trending videos and the squeegee art became a trend. And it's wild that that happened because again, like with TikTok, you know, you don't really get credit for that. But, and then I eventually created my own tool. So this is a, a very large, my own homemade squeegee, you could say. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was thinking too, I was like, wow, is that something you buy at an art store? You know, no, like, no, that that is not something you can buy in an art store. I, I went to the hardware store and I picked out the materials and I asked my husband if he could make it for me. And he just used scrap wood and some other. I'm not going to disclose what the material is. Yeah, no, I, I think that's OK. I think something <laughs> you're private. I, I think that's actually a really great topic to discuss of um, other. If you see other artists kind of recreating what you're doing and um yeah like how how do you deal with that or or what are your feelings towards it do you do you reach out and be like hey at least give me credit or or I mean I definitely I when I first started for instance this paint company they're called deco art they're very famous um they hired a different person to literally recreate my paintings um, they hired a white woman too. And so I was like, wow, I can't believe y'all did that. You could have just reached out to me and asked me to pay. They literally paid somebody else to recreate my work, like literally. And so I reached out to them and they took their video down. They did. Um, Cause wow. it was a company, right? But after that, it's kind of just like so many people do this. And honestly, it does, it does bother me in some ways, but also I have grown as an artist and I am able to be confident in my, (laughs) in, in, in my work, right? Like if I think if I focus on all of that, I'll be distracted and I won't be able to continue to grow. So I kind of just have to let it go and um, just feel a sense of accomplishment in the fact that, you know, I started this trend of, of using squeegee to create, communities of people and a lot of people do it without thinking about the deeper meaning you know they're like oh it's easy DIY art again it's not easy 
It's not easy. This this video here that I showed seven seconds of, it, it took a lot longer than that to actually do that. Right. And, and hang it up, I'm sure. Right. Set right. up and, and then I I broke the canvas. <laughs> I didn't show that part. You broke it? Wait, what do you mean? (laughs) Hole in the canvas at the bottom. (laughs) So I had to angle the camera differently. So anyway, so a lot goes behind. There's a lot of behind the scenes in the art that I don't show. Um, But I do, I would recommend to artists. I I do have a lot of my paintings copyrighted so that when, at least when other people post your videos without your permission, you can then share, you know, say, hey, I have this copyrighted. Please do not post with my permission, without my permission, so. Oh, my God. And look at uh, a million and a half views. I mean, let's talk about okay. how, many how many likes it has. I mean, it likes. Has. I mean, views it has, I think it's 80, over it's 80. It's a lot. It's so many. It's shout wild. Out, shout out to my friend, Dana Weldon. She likes yeah, it. Dana! <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it like to go viral? I mean... I obviously have no experience other than a cat video getting like 300 likes, my kid, my two cats. I was like, whoa, big time over here. Um, but is your phone just like blowing up all day long? I like, I had to turn, I have notifications turned off. I don't, I don't even look at them, honestly. Um, it is a lot. It is, it can be very overwhelming to me. This is when I first moved into my apartment in Porto. And I feel I that's so crazy to see this because I've continued to create art even when I'm moving. But um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I just turn my notifications off and reply when I can. Honestly, it's wild. It, but again, my goal is not necessarily to, it's not a tutorial. I'm trying to sell my art. So a lot of times, like all these, most of these paintings have already sold because I make the video because I I studied digital media. I have a master's in digital media. I studied digital marketing. I studied web design. And so my goal really is to sell my art. So I make these videos, the promotional videos to show people what my paintings look like, the process behind them in hopes that they'll buy them. So. I mean, I, I love when I see like, this is not a tutorial on some of your posts. I'm like, good for her. Cause that's what it is. It's like, this is my art practice. This is for entertainment and your enjoyment and not right. recreate my art. And, exactly. and I think this is, so we can talk a little bit. You are now in Portugal. You moved I am. from Seattle, right? I moved from Seattle, right. Yeah, I moved to Portugal in September, 2021. And I have been here ever since. And it's been absolutely wonderful. I was curious, yeah. how many days a week are you painting? How many pieces do you make a week or month? Yeah, I, I am honestly constantly painting. Um, I now, now I am probably painting. I go into my art studio every day. So maybe I don't com- do a painting every day, but I'm there organizing and cataloging and doing all of that every day. So I would say maybe like two or th- to three days a week right now I'm painting. But again, it's summer. My daughter's out of school. But when she's in school, I paint every day. I paint five days a week at least. Hmm. But um, I started in my dining room. Well, not I mean, I lived in an 800 square foot house in Seattle, so it was very small. <laughs> and I was creating in just my dining room table. And then my husband cleared out part of the garage, one car garage, and I was painting in there with all the spiders. Oh. And then I, I moved, then we moved to Portugal and we just had an apartment in Porto. And I was, I just got a plastic tablecloth and I was painting on the table. And I remember our landlord came in and he saw all the paintings around. And he was like, wow, you got paint on the floor. And I was like, I know, I know, Luis. The school bay. And then even in Porto, I wanted to, so my friend challenged me to do like a, the biggest painting I've ever done. And so I didn't have room in my apartment. So I went out to the square, this very famous square in Porto. It's a plaza. Oh, I feel, oh, and I feel I, like I, um, Plaza, it's called Plaza Batalha. I'm still learning Portuguese, so the pronunciation is hard for me. But um, I just went out to the plaza and bought a giant canvas roll. And by this time, I actually lived near, um, in Porto, I lived near an art shop. And so the people that worked there knew me. So they gave me a discount on the canvas roll. And so I had the canvas roll over my shoulder. And I had my husband bring out my uh, paints. And I had it in a crate. And I just laid it out in the middle of the plaza by this beautiful cathedral with a uh, blue tile. 
and I did a giant painting there. And then I hung it on the side of a building to dry. <laughs> is that on Instagram? Or it's on Instagram. Yeah, it's on Instagram. Yeah. It's on there, yeah. It's down. It's further down. Because this was uh, last year. Oh, it's back. That? There it is. Uh, yeah, right there. This, yeah, this is this is the place. It's me in front of it after it was hanging. So oh. I... Um, yeah, I did the painting out there in, in this street. I was actually inspired to do that because of um, Salvador Dali. I went to his museum outside of Barcelona and there is a painting of his, of a man's face, but it was performance art. He, mm -hmm. he used an octopus. He used the ink from an octopus in the middle of the town square. And he just had a piece of paper and he just went around and, and did the man's face in front of the whole town. Wow. And I wish it so, would play, but it's not playing. Oh, it's okay. But um, yeah, so that I was inspired by him to do this. Like before, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily about the end result. It was about you know doing it out with the energy of the people around me. So I love it. Where, where is that piece now? Um, I somebody bought it in Houston, Texas. My friend bought it. I so it. yeah. Um. I mean, that's incredible. And I'm curious too, like, did I, I've only followed you, you know, in mm -hmm. the past few months. And so you've mm -hmm. always had a big following to me. And when you started posting in 2020, were you already, did you kind of have a following or did you blow up through this, through your abstract painting? Yeah, it was really through my abstract painting. And really I blew up first on TikTok. So I started, I started TikTok first because my dad told me about TikTok. My dad he studied computers in college. So he's like, he's in his sixties, but he's not the average 60 year old. So he was like, you need to get on TikTok. You can get paid. And I was like, dad, what are you talking about? You're crazy. And he was like, no, you can get paid. And I was like, okay, dad. And so I um, started posting my videos there. And then if you, you can join the creator program, right? If you get 10,000 followers, you can join the creator program. Uh huh. On TikTok. I don't know if that's still, this was in 2020. I don't know what the requirements are now, mm. but if you have 10,000 followers, then you can join the creator program, the creator fund, and they will pay you a percentage of the um, ad revenue. Wow. And so I started doing that. And then quickly I started gaining followers. So I had a hundred thousand followers on TikTok while I still had maybe a couple thousand on Instagram. And that lasted for a long time and still until Instagram started really pushing their reels, right? That's been recent. I mean, I guess not recent, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still kind of recent for a lot of people who haven't mm -hmm. stepped into the reel. But yeah, I feel like a mm -hmm. year ago, that was the time of like the golden right. era of like they'll push push your workout. But exactly. So when when I was posting, I would just cross post and see which platform did better. But um, for a long time the TikTok, my TikTok audience still is bigger than my Instagram audience. Not by much now, but it's, it's always been um, bigger and also more sales through TikTok for some reason. That's amazing. So I, I would ask, what's your kind of biggest advice or tips on creating art reels mm -hmm. for social media? I think you're really, you're really great at it. And it's not even like, oh, you're just filming something, you're posting it. You know, I, I actually do think mm -hmm. you have a style and um, you're so succinct and it's so entertaining and it is a skill. You're, you know, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. You have video skills like prior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And it helps that I have video. People always ask me this, like, what can I do? What can I do? And again, I have an advantage because I studied video production for so many years. Um, but I think that nowadays, people, you have the tools in your hand. Even if you don't have an iPhone, you have the tools, any kind of smartphone. Um, I think people's biggest hurdle is not wanting to film themselves. So don't be afraid to film your process. Don't be afraid to talk about when you mess up. You know, when I was on live last night, I talked about how I messed up twice. I wasted a bunch of paint, but here I am going to try again. So, and don't be afraid to, you know, share with people what you're thinking, if you have doubts, share it with them because that's real. People want to see what's really happening because then they're going to learn about you. They're going to learn about your art. They're going to learn about your story. So I think it's so important just to, you know, try to capture all of those aspects of your work. Even if you think it's boring, somebody else will find an interest in it and don't be afraid to share it. 
So just just start, just start sharing something and, mm-hmm. you know, use a tripod, please. Uh, make sure the lighting is good. <laughs> yeah. It's film in the daylight. It's just like really basic things, right? Like if you don't have a tripod, prop up your phone on the wall and just talk, you know? So I think everybody can um, show their process and, and really share their story. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment to do it. That's true. That's great advice. And, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of want to ask you some more advice tips of like what it's so inspiring that you started your, your painting journey. Well, your abstract mm-hmm. painting journey two years mm-hmm. ago. And, you know, what, what's your advice to creatives who feel it's just like a little too late to just pick up a new discipline or try something mm-hmm. new or, you know, what, what would you say to them? Yeah. Again, it's never too late to try something new. Um, don't let that your age. I, I think that that happens a lot with us where we're like, like, I'm, I just turned 36 this year. I'm like, I'm 36. Wow. Like I should have accomplished A, B and C by now. But I don't think we should let that limit us from what we can accomplish. Right. We're all on different timelines and there's no set rules with what we should have accomplished by now. So it's never too late. I mean, um, I myself like was really interested in pottery last year. I was doing pottery and, mm. and it was really hard, uh, but I still have an interest in that. I've taken a class since then. Um, so just keep trying and keep, keep practicing. I think um, for me, I definitely use a couple of tools to keep myself focused. So I like to journal. Um, if you read the book, The Artist's Way, mm-hmm. the author talks about, journaling she she talked about that my morning pages mm-hmm. and just doing three pages of writing it doesn't have to be something that you're going to reread it could just be something that you do to get those thoughts out your head and get them on paper get them somewhere and so i would recommend doing that before you start whatever task you're going to do so just write everything out it doesn't have to be in the morning it could be whatever And then that way, when you're going to go start your new, you know, you're going to start knitting, you're going to start painting, you're going to start coding, whatever it is, you are able to focus on whatever that task is. You're not thinking about, oh, did I do the laundry or did I call my sister back? You know, you're able to focus on the task at hand and really learning something new and putting your all into it. So I've been writing my morning pages ever since I was 10 years, over 10 years ago. (laughs) Wow. I mean, that's impressive to I'm just commitment to sticking to a habit. And mm-hmm. I know I, I I didn't read the whole book, but I did read about the mm-hmm. morning pages and that lasted like a week for me and I completely <laughs> forgot about it. But I remember it being like, wow, this is really beneficial. And you it don't is. realize how much noise is happening in your head and you just like need to get it out and release it on a page so you can move Mm -hmm. on and like focus on something else so I think that's a really Mm -hmm. great and I think too I think too like for me as a mom a lot of it I felt like I couldn't not that I couldn't write with my daughter but she writes with me now so before bed she gets in the bed she says mommy let's write about our days so even if I didn't get to do my morning pages she's like okay let's write she doesn't know how to write yet (laughs) She knows her letters, but she's in this. So she's she's writing with me, and she's like, "Mama, you're writing too fast. You're already done with three pages." I'm like, "Okay, baby, I'll slow down." So she knows that three pages is my goal, and she that's her, that's her goal now too. So you can demonstrate this to your family, right? So if you feel like that, you know, there's a distraction if you have kids or if you have somebody that you take care of, make them do it with you, because then you're more likely to do it more often. <laughs> That's so true. And also Mm -hmm. so sweet where you just realization of like kids really pay attention and just emulate what you do. I don't have kids, just have cats, Mm -hmm. but uh, (laughs) one day it's just a nice reminder of like, oh, that's, that's a really Mm -hmm. beautiful practice that you're already instilling in your daughter. And I love that. Um, I'm curious, like what, so what keeps you inspired? (laughs) What keeps me inspired? Um, again, just challenging myself as an artist, just wanting to grow, just, I, I try to, you know, set goals for myself every couple of months. I'm like, okay, what do I really want to accomplish long-term? What is it that I want to do? You know, moving to Portugal was one of the goals I had back in, in 2020. And so I worked for a long time to make that happen. Um, and so now I'm, I'm setting new goals for myself and, that, that is what inspires me, honestly. Like, okay, say I want to um, 
have my own brand of paint one day. So that inspires me to continue to playing around with different brands, see what I like, see what I don't like, the texture, what works for me and my style. And maybe one day when people ask me, what paint do you use? I can say, oh, this is my brand. Here you go. I love it. (laughs) I'm a big believer of speaking things into existence too. So that's right. And (laughs) I, I actually really relate to that, you know, of, of goals keeping you inspired, mm-hmm. you know, because I think a lot of people you hear, oh, external this, this. And I really mm-hmm. relate to like, yeah, actually personal goals I'm setting for myself is what keeps me on right. that path to, to keep keep creating. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about your NFTs and your NFT space? I mean, I think that's incredible that you're an abstract painter, such an analog, you know, practice mm-hmm. and you're constantly moving into the digital world and and jumping on what is trending and or do you think nfts are trending i mean i think they're here to stay no yeah i think it's i kind of think it's moved past the trend now i think it is here to stay it's more it's in more of an acceptable form of art collection really um and creativity right uh it is has really allowed people to flourish And also I love NFTs because it really helps the creator, the original creator maintain um, those, that revenue, right? Like we get a piece of it. Once our NFT is sold, we still maintain um, that wealth that comes with it. Right. Um, But I really love NFTs. I did launch my first collection this year. I, I actually had minted a couple of NFTs back in when was it? Well, I guess it was 2020. Um, but I, I didn't really do much with it. But my husband actually works now. He works in uh, for a cryptocurrency company. So he was like, let me help you launch your collection. And I'm like, OK, let's do it. Incredible. I mean, that. Yeah, that's such a big topic. I mean, I've, I've looked into the NFT space and it's so intimidating. It is. You're really? like, oh, my God, uh, how do I start? Where do I wh- where can we? Where are your pieces? Uh, yeah, my, my pieces are on OpenSea. They're on OpenSea and um, they are available. I also have a piece on the Tezo platform. There's different platforms, right? There's different cryptocurrencies. So whether you're going to um, mint them through Ethereum or through Tezos or through um, Solana. So <laughs> I would say start doing some research about the different platforms. <laughs> yeah. Right now is actually a good time because the prices have definitely gone down. And so the gas fees is just basically like the fees to, to mint your, your art, to make it an actual NFT, turn it from a from an image to a, a NFT are low right now. So oh, do, really yeah. So do your research, but definitely you need to post your collection on OpenSea. Um, and there's tons of tutorials out there, but I say go for it. It's a great way for artists to get their work out there and to, um, you know, start to make your artwork a sustainable way for you to live. Absolutely. Is the and so I'm going to show your. Oh, yeah. Wait, I hope it plays. So are these, this, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Leave your questions and comments. I'll try to. <laughs> an artist. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to do research. I guess not playing, but um, this is a digital gallery. I'm trying to remember the name of the website that I used to create this. It's a free website that you can use. Once you have your NFTs minted, then you can go and they have different, you know, different rooms you can use. I use like the more traditional art gallery, but you have different rooms and you can place your your NFTs on the wall and then people can see them and then purchase them. So it's a really great way to, yeah. And when, did you, when did you launch your collection? Um, I launched it in May. We touched on a little bit. I'll, I, I like to ask this question at the end, you know, where I've already said speaking things into existence. So, you know what, and I'd love to give you the space uh, to share your biggest goal or dream and what, what can we expect from you down the line? My biggest goal or dream. Oh, my goodness. I guess I mentioned the paints, like having my own art brand. That's not necessarily my biggest goal. Honestly, my biggest goal is just to be able to live and not worry about 
having to constantly be on the grind and constantly be in the studio creating. I want to just be able to live and create when I want to, share when I want to, and not worry about anything else. I would love to be in, um, have my artwork in a museum. That's like a really big goal of mine to have my work in a museum. Um, but other than that, really, it's just to be, to be at peace and <laughs> not constantly be working. I, my, I don't aspire to work every day. I just want to, just to be able to live and to um, have a community around me that is supportive and loving. So that's it. I love it. It's a beautiful goal. And yeah. we will see that you will get there. You know, you're already speaking it. So um, I want to thank you. You're so inspiring. Please keep creating. Ignore the noise in the background. We need artists. We need women. We need women of color. We need diverse, you know, artists yeah. out there in the world constantly sharing their art. So thank you for your art your inspiration and your joy. You're such a pleasure to talk to oh, you. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. And I love your art. I started following you because I loved your illustrations. And I was like, I want to learn how to use Procreate. And I saw your work and I was like, this is so wonderful. So, yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for sharing your art and, and for sharing your own skills with everyone. That's wonderful. You're so sweet. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk about